Topic 1.1, Relating Multiplication and Division. So we learned that multiplication and division are related as inverse operations, and we know about multiplying uh, multiples of 10 by adding the zeros. Today what we're going to do is the opposite. We're going to divide multiples of 10 with what we know about multiplication already and its relationship to division. Should be easy. Do you remember talking in past years about an array? It's that right there, an array. Uh, that is basically an arrangement of objects in equal rows and equal columns, right? So we could do like this. So this would be an array. Where do you see arrays in your classroom? Like maybe the arrangement of the desks or the tables, uh, maybe the window panes. Uh, if you look up, maybe at the ceiling tiles. So if thinking about arrays, that's going to help us out with both multiplication and division when we're looking at these rows and columns. Let me give you a scenario here. Let's say at Office Depot they have 12 boxes of books and they're arranged, they want to arrange on the floor three rows uh, stacked up. They have the same number of boxes in each row. So what would that array look like? So we've got three rows stacked on top of each other. So we'd need a box here, a box here, and a box here. We have 12 total. So put four there, four there on top, and then four in the third row. Everyone understands that these are rows going across and then up and down these would be columns. Okay, so we have three rows going there. So let's just kind of clean that up and analyze how this relates to multiplication and division on the next slide. Ah, much neater looking. Alright, so here we have an array. What multiplication fact tells the total number of boxes that we have here? Okay, so remember we're going rows and columns there. We have three times four equals the total of 12, right? What division fact tells the total number of boxes in each row? Well, we have 12 total. And how many rows do we have? That would be divided by 3. So that would tell us that there are 4 boxes in each row. And how are these two numbers uh, in these facts related? Well, they're basically the same, aren't they? I mean, we have uh, the same numbers just kind of arranged differently with the different symbols in there. These are all part of this fact family. Right, now we're going to go ahead and kick this up a notch with um, multiples of 10. Alright, we've got these boxes here. We've got 12 boxes. But what if there were 10 books in each one of these boxes? Let's go ahead and load these books up in here. A heavy floor display. Oops. All right, so how many books are in one row now? We have 40, right? So what multiplication with multiplication problem with this number 40? Can you write to find how many books are in all three rows? Well, we have 40 in one row. So if we did 3 rows times the 40, that would get us 120 total books. Do you see the basic math fact in, fact in here? The 3 times the 4 equals the 12. The 0 on the 40, when you add that to the 4 to make 40, you're going to add a 0 at the product to make that uh, 120, or 12 groups of 10. And conversely, you can do the opposites, uh, knowing that there are 120 books in all three equal rows. Uh, we could come up with a related division sentence to find out how many books are in each row. We could say, well, there's 120 total, and divide that by the three rows, and that would get us 40. Again, you see the basic math fact in here, um, 12 divided by... 3, get you 4. 0 here, you have to add a 0 on the other side too. 
So this should be relatively simple then, just keeping your um, zeros in check and just knowing your basic, looking for those basic math facts and multiplication and division. Let's just try a couple of examples here. Let's just say uh, 5 times something equals 40. Well, we know that that's going to be an 8. If we have 5 times something equals 400, well, we've got that 8 there. But then we have an extra 0 on this side, so we know it's by a power of 10. So we're going to have um, 5 times 80. Conversely, if you had 40 divided by 5, that would get you 8. And then 400 divided by 5 would get you 80. Here's your 40 divided by 5 to get 8. If you have an extra 0 here, you have the 0 over here. All right, just do a couple for me over here on the side as a quick check for me. And I'll see you in the morning.